Chapter 26 The Legomenism Concerning the Deliberations of the Very Saintly Ashiata Shiamash Under the Title of The Terror of the Situation The Legomenism, Beelzebub continued to speak, through which the deliberations of the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash were transmitted, had the following contents. It began with the prayer. In the name of the causes of my arising, I shall always strive to be just towards every already spiritualized origination and towards all the originations of the future spiritualized manifestations of our common creator, almighty autocrat endlessness. Amen. To me, a trifling particle of the whole of the great whole, it was commanded from above to be coated with the planetary body of a three-centred being of this planet, and to assist all other such beings arising and existing upon it, to free themselves from the consequences of the properties of that organ which, for great and important reasons, was actualized in the presences of their ancestors. All the sacred individuals here before me, specially and intentionally actualized from above, have always endeavoured while striving for the same aim to accomplish the task laid upon them through one or other of those three sacred ways for self-perfecting, foreordained by our endless Creator Himself, namely, through the sacred ways based on the being impulses called faith hope, and love. When I completed my seventeenth year, I began, as commanded from above, to prepare my planetary body in order, during my responsible existence, to be able to be impartial. At this period of my self-preparation, I had the intention upon reaching responsible age of carrying out the task laid upon me through one or other of the said three sacred being impulses also. But when during this period of my self-preparation I chanced to meet many beings of almost all types formed and existing here in the city of Babylon, and when during my impartial observations I constated many traits of their being manifestations, there crept into me and progressively increased an essence doubt as to the possibilities of saving the three centred beings of this planet by means of these three sacred ways. The different manifestations of the beings I then encountered, which increased my doubts, gradually convinced me that these consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer, having passed by heredity through a series of generations over a very long period of time, had ultimately so crystallized in their presences that they now reached contemporary beings already as a lawful part of their essence. And hence these crystallized consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabufa are now, as it were, a second nature of their common presences. So, when I finally became a responsible being, I decided that before making my choice among the mentioned sacred ways, I would bring my planetary body into the state of the sacred Kshirk Nara, that is, into the state of all-brained balanced being perceptiveness, and only when already in that state 
to choose the way for my further activities. With this aim, I then ascended the mountain Vesiniama, where for forty days and nights I knelt on my knees and devoted myself to concentration. A second forty days and nights I neither ate nor drank, but recalled and analysed all the impressions present in me of all the perceptions I had acquired during my existence here, during the period of my self-preparation. A third forty days and nights I knelt on my knees and also neither ate nor drank, and every half hour I plucked two hairs from my breast, and only when, thereafter, I had finally attained complete freedom from all the bodily and spiritual associations of the impressions of ordinary life, I began to meditate how to be. These meditations of my purified reason then made it categorically clear to me that to save the contemporary beings by any of the sacred ways was already too late. These meditations of mine made it categorically clear to me that all the genuine functions proper to man, as they are proper to all the three centred beings of our great universe, had already degenerated in their remote ancestors into other functions. Namely, into functions included among the properties of the organ kundabufa, which were very similar to the genuine sacred being functions of faith, love and hope. And this degeneration occurred in all probability in consequence of the fact that when the organ kundabufa had been destroyed in these ancestors, and they had also acquired in themselves factors for the genuine sacred being impulses, then, as the taste of many of the properties of the organ kundabufa still remained in them, these properties of the organ kundabufa, which resembled these three sacred impulses, became gradually mixed with the latter, with the result that there were crystallized in their psyche the factors for the impulses, faith, love and hope, which, although similar to the genuine, were nevertheless somehow or other quite distinct. The contemporary three centred beings here do at times believe, love and hope, with their reason as well as with their feelings. But how they believe, how they love and how they hope. Ah, it is exactly in this that all the peculiarity of these three being properties lies. They also believe, but this sacred impulse in them does not function independently, as it does in general in all the three centred beings existing on the various other planets of our great universe, upon which beings with the same possibilities breed. But it arises dependent upon some or other factors, which have been formed in their common presences, owing as always to the same consequences of the properties of the organ kundabufa, as for instance, the particular properties arising in them which they call vanity, self-love, pride, self-conceit, and so forth. In consequence of this, the three-brained beings here are for the most part subject to the perceptions and fixations in their presences of all sorts of sinkir pusurams, or, as it is expressed here, they believe any old tale. It is perfectly easy to convince beings of this planet of anything you like, provided only during their perceptions of these fictions 
there is evoked in them and there proceeds, either consciously from without, or automatically by itself, the functioning of one or another corresponding consequence of the properties of the organ kundabufa, crystallized in them from among those that form what is called the subjectivity of the given being. As, for instance, self-love, vanity, pride, swagger, imagination, bragging, arrogance, and so on. From the influence of such actions upon their degenerated reason, and on the degenerated factors in their localizations, which factors actualize their being sensations, not only is there crystallized a false conviction concerning the mentioned fictions, but thereafter, in all sincerity and faith, they will even vehemently prove to those around them that it is just so, and can in no way be otherwise. In an equally abnormal form were data moulded in them for evoking the sacred impulse of love. In the presences of the beings of contemporary times, there also arises and is present in them as much as you please of that strange impulse which they call love. But this love of theirs is firstly also the result of certain crystallized consequences of the properties of the same Kundabufa. And secondly, this impulse of theirs arises and manifests itself in the process of every one of them entirely subjectively. So subjectively and so differently that if ten of them were asked to explain how they sensed this inner impulse of theirs, then all ten of them, if, of course, they for once replied sincerely and frankly confessed their genuine sensations and not those they had read about somewhere or had obtained from somebody else, all ten would reply differently and describe ten different sensations. One would explain this sensation in the sexual sense, another in the sense of pity, a third in the sense of desire for submission, a fourth in a common craze for outer things, and so on, and so forth. But not one of the ten could describe even remotely the sensation of genuine love. And none of them would, because in none of the ordinary beings men here has there ever been, for a long time, any sensation of the sacred being impulse of genuine love. And without this taste, they cannot even vaguely describe that most beatific sacred being impulse in the presence of every three-centred being of the whole universe, which, in accordance with the divine foresight of great nature, forms those data in us, from the result of the experiencing of which we can blissfully rest from the meritorious labours actualized by us for the purpose of self-perfection. Here, in these times, if one of those three-brained beings loves somebody or other, then he loves him either because the latter always encourages and undeservingly flatters him, or because his nose is much like the nose of that female or male with whom thanks to the cosmic law of polarity, or type, a relation has been established which has not yet been broken, or finally, he loves him only because the latter's uncle is in a big way of business and may one day give him a boost, and so on, and so forth. But never do beings men here love with genuine, impartial, and non-egoistic love. 
thanks to this kind of love in the contemporary beings here, their hereditary predispositions to the crystallizations of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabhofa are crystallized at the present time without hindrance and finally become fixed in their nature as a lawful part of them. And as regards the third sacred being impulse, namely, essence hope, its plight in the presences of the three-centred beings here is even worse than with the first two. Such a being impulse has not only finally adapted itself in them to the whole of their presences in a distorted form, but this maleficent strange hope, newly formed in them, which has taken the place of the being impulse of sacred hope, is now already the principal reason why factors can no longer be acquired in them for the functioning of the genuine being impulses of faith, love, and hope. In consequence of this newly formed abnormal hope of theirs, they always hope in something, and thereby all those possibilities are constantly being paralysed in them, which arise in them either intentionally from without or accidentally by themselves which possibilities could perhaps still destroy in their presences their hereditary predispositions to the crystallizations of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabhofa. When I returned from the mountain Viziniyama to the city of Babylon, I continued my observations in order to make it clear whether it was not possible, somehow or other, to help these unfortunates in some other way. During the period of my year of special observations on all of their manifestations and perceptions, I made it categorically clear to myself that although the factors for engendering in their presences the sacred being impulses of faith, hope and love are already quite degenerated in the beings of this planet, Nevertheless, the factor which ought to engender that being impulse on which the whole psyche of beings of a three-brained system is in general based, and which impulse exists under the name of objective conscience, is not yet atrophied in them, but remains in their presences almost in its primordial state. Thanks to the abnormally established conditions of external ordinary being existence existing here, this factor has gradually penetrated and become embedded in that consciousness, which is here called subconsciousness, in consequence of which it takes no part whatever in the functioning of their ordinary consciousness. Well then, it was just then that I indubitably understood with all the separate ruminating parts representing the whole of my I, that if the functioning of that being factor, still surviving in their common presences, were to participate in the general functioning of that consciousness of theirs in which they pass their daily, as they say here, waking existence, only then would it still be possible to save the contemporary three-brained beings here from the consequences of the properties of that organ which was intentionally planted into their first ancestors. My further meditations then confirmed for me that it would be possible to attain this only if their general being existence were to flow for a long time under foreseeingly corresponding conditions. When all the above mentioned was completely transubstantiated in me, I decided to consecrate the whole of myself from that time on to the creation here of such conditions that the functioning of the sacred conscience, still surviving in their subconsciousness, 
might gradually pass into the functioning of their ordinary consciousness. May the blessing of our almighty, omni-loving common father, uni-being, creator or endlessness, be upon my decision. Amen. Thus ended the logomanism concerning the deliberations of the very saintly, incomparable Ashiata Shiamash, under the title of The Terror of the Situation. So, my boy, when, as I have already told you, early in my last descent in person onto the surface of your planet, I first became acquainted in detail with this logomanism which I have just repeated, and had at once become interested in the deductions of this later most high, very saintly, common cosmic individual, Ashiata Shiamash. There existed neither any other legomenisms nor any other sources of information concerning his further very saintly activities among those favourites of yours. So I then decided to investigate in detail and without fail to make clear to myself which were the measures he took and how he subsequently actualized them in order to help these unfortunates to deliver themselves from the consequences of the properties of the organ kundabufa, which had passed to them by heredity, and which were so maleficent for them. And so, as one of my chief tasks during this last sojourn of mine in person there, on the surface of your planet, I made a detailed investigation and elucidation of the whole of the further very saintly activities there, among your favourites, of that great, essence-loving, now most high, very saintly, common cosmic individual, Ashiata Shiamash. And as regards that marble tablet, which has by chance survived since the time of the very saintly activities of the great Ashiata Shiamash, and is now there the principal sacred relic of the Brotherhood of the Initiated Beings called the Brotherhood Olbogmek. I happened to see and read the contents engraved on it during this last sojourn of mine there. During my subsequent elucidations, it turned out that later on, when this very saintly Ashiata Shiamash had established there the particular conditions of ordinary being existence which he had planned. Several of these tablets were, on his advice and initiative, set up in corresponding places of many of the large towns, and there were engraved upon them all kinds of sayings and counsels for corresponding existence. But when their big wars later on again began, all these tablets were also destroyed by these strange beings themselves, and only one of them, namely, that one now with these brethren, somehow survived, as I have already told you, and is now the property of this brotherhood. On this still surviving marble were inscriptions concerning the sacred being impulses called faith, love, and hope. Namely, faith, love, and hope. Faith of consciousness is freedom. Faith of feeling is weakness. Faith of body is stupidity. Love of consciousness evokes the same in response. Love of feeling evokes the opposite. Love of body depends only on type and polarity. Hope of consciousness is strength. Hope of feeling is slavery. Hope of body is disease.
Before continuing to tell you more about the activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash for the welfare of your favourites, I must, I think, elucidate to you a little more in detail that inner impulse which is called there by your favourites, hope, and concerning which the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash can stated that the case is worse than with the other two. And the personal observations and investigations I later specially made regarding this said strange impulse present in them clearly showed me that in truth the factors for engendering this abnormal impulse in their presences are most maleficent for them themselves. Thanks to this abnormal hope of theirs, a very singular and most strange disease, with the property of evolving, arose and exists among them there even until now, a disease called there tomorrow. This strange disease tomorrow brought with it terrifying consequences and particularly for those unfortunate three-brained beings there who chance to learn and to become categorically convinced with the whole of their presence that they possess some very undesirable consequences for the deliverance from which they must make certain efforts, and which efforts, moreover, they even know just how to make. But owing to this maleficent disease tomorrow, they never succeed in making these required efforts. And this is just the maleficent part of all that great terrifying evil, which, owing to various causes great and small, is concentrated in the process of the ordinary being existence of these pitiable three-brained beings, and by putting off from tomorrow till tomorrow, those unfortunate beings there who do by chance learn all about what I have mentioned are also deprived of the possibility of ever attaining anything real. This strange and for your favourites maleficent disease tomorrow has already become a hindrance for the beings of contemporary times, not only because they have been totally deprived of all the possibilities of removing from their presences the crystallised consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabuffer, but it had also become a hindrance to most of them in honestly discharging at least those being obligations of theirs which have become quite indispensable in the already established conditions of ordinary being existence. Thanks to the disease tomorrow, the three-brained beings there, particularly the contemporary ones, almost always put off till later everything that needs to be done at the moment, being convinced that later they will do better and more. Owing to the said maleficent disease tomorrow, most of these unfortunate beings there who accidentally, or owing to a conscious influence from without, become aware through their reason in them of their complete nullity and begin to sense it with all their separate spiritualized parts, and who also chance to learn which and in what way being efforts must be made in order to become such as it is proper for three-brained beings to be. Also, by putting off from tomorrow till tomorrow, almost all arrive at the point that on one sorrowful day for themselves, there arise in them and begin to be manifest those forerunners of old age called feebleness and infirmity, which are the inevitable lot of all cosmic formations great and small toward the end of their completed existence. Here I must without fail tell you also about that strange phenomenon which I constated there during my observations and studies 
of the almost entirely degenerated presences of those favourites of yours. Namely, I definitely constated that in many of them, toward the end of their planetary existence, most of the consequences of the properties of that same organ which had become crystallised in their common presences begin to atrophy of their own accord, and some of them even entirely disappear, in consequence of which these beings begin to see and sense reality a little better. In such cases a strong desire appears in the common presences of such favourites of yours to work upon themselves, to work as they say, for the salvation of their soul. But needless to say, nothing can result from such desires of theirs just because it is already too late for them. The time given them for this purpose by great nature having already passed. And although they see and feel the necessity for actualizing the required being efforts, yet for the fulfillment of such desires of theirs, they have now only ineffectual yearnings and the lawful infirmities of old age. And so, my boy, my researches and investigations concerning the further activities of the very saintly Ashiata Shiamash for the welfare of the three-brained beings arising and existing on this planet of yours eventually made the following clear to me. When this great and, by his reason, almost incomparable sacred individual became fully convinced that the ordinary sacred ways which exist for the purpose of self-perfection for all the three-brained beings of the universe were no longer suitable for the beings of this planet, he then, after his year of special observation and studies of their psyche, again ascended to that same mountain Viziniyama, and during several terrestrial months contemplatively pondered in which way he could actualize his decision, that is, to save the beings of this planet from those hereditary predispositions to the crystallizations of the consequences of the properties of the organ Kundabufa, by means of those data which survived in their subconsciousness for the fundamental sacred being impulse, conscience. These ponderings of his then first of all fully convinced him that though it were indeed possible to save them by means of the data which survived in their common presences for engendering this sacred being impulse, nevertheless, it would only be possible if the manifestations of these data which survived in their subconsciousness were to participate without fail in the functioning of that consciousness of theirs, under the direction of which their daily waking existence flows. And furthermore, if this being impulse were to be manifested over a long period through every aspect of this consciousness of theirs, 